Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation, and this is our Hood Recovery Services. Today is August the 13th, and I'm going to do your spiritual principle a day in a meditation. If you need to reach me, please do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into our meditation. I need to move that a little bit so you can see. So we'll move that when we get closer to the bottom, okay? Anonymity and individuality. In anonymity, we are free to be ourselves and to carry and receive a message of hope with the addict who suffers, regardless of whenever, wherever, or whoever they might be. Guiding Principle Tradition 12, Closing Reflection. We live in the world where, consciously and unconsciously, we adjust how we speak and behave at times to fit our circumstances. We avoid certain four-letter words when talking to granny or the boss, for example. We greet each other in different ways, too. A handshake, a bow, or a fist bump may be called for, depending on the situation, or maybe cheek-to-cheek -cheek air kisses, one, two, or three. But the point is that people, even non-addicts, adapt as a sign of respect or solidarity. But as with so many other characteristics, addicts can take this natural inclination to extremes. In active addiction, we scaled up our capacity to read situations and leverage the skill set to get what we needed. Instead of being flexible to connect with others, we were cunning manipulators trying to get our own way. Recovery helps us return this ability to its proper proportions. I like that. <laughs> Working the steps helps us figure out who we are and then supports our efforts to be and do our best. What a relief. We can be more secure in our own identities and less like millions today. Practicing the spiritual principle of anonymity does not mean losing our individuality. In reality, the very character of Narcotics Anonymous relies, in part, on the rough-and-tumble liveliness that arises from the diverse personalities of our members, as stated in It Works How Why. In being our weird, wonderful selves, we allow a broader range of addicts to connect with the message and come to believe that NA might work for them, too. Collectively and individually, we are NA's best asset. In fact, we are NA. When we share from the heart, others connect. Being ourselves to the best of our ability makes way for others to do the same. There is a place for all of us in NA. We all fit in when we focus on caring and receiving our message of hope. Remove this. I will share my unvarnished experience today knowing that serenity and genuineness are far more important than polish or pre pretense. N.A. needs me to be more, no, no more, no less. Let's reread that. N.A. needs me to be no more, no less. Turns out I need that too. Hmm. I'm just sitting here smiling, reading this meditation, anonymity and individuality. So we, we're talking about unity, right? Um, not uniformity. We're not talking about unity. We're talking about different personalities coming together for the same cause. And within that cause, we unify our personalities. We, we in a sense, we unify our message to be the same message, no matter who or what our personalities are if that makes sense. But what it doesn't require is that I stop liking the color pink 
or that I start stop liking the leopard print. I don't have to change that for anybody. These are things that are have become to be identifying parts of my personality, my character, and you have the right to do the same. And so it's very interesting um, to watch people learn to where they fit in in the fellowship, right? They get uncomfortable with this one group of people, so they develop another group of people that they feel more comfortable with. But in reality, the the this message is true. We can be ourselves and hear and receive a message of hope, regardless, regardless to where, regardless to when, regardless to who. We we don't have to get caught up in uh, changing every time we have a different encounter. And it does, you know, it does give us a worldview, a cultural worldview of how people do adjust how they greet one another, depending on who they're with. They do adjust how they speak, depending on who they're around. Um, but at the end of the day, that is just a part of cultural humility right that's a part of being culturally humble meaning that when I go into a different culture or a different group of people I'm very much aware of that what I'm bringing to the table may not be the same thing that they operate with I'm not assuming that the way I do things is the best way to do things like I have I have nephews that I'm raising great nephews and like I said, we've had a family member that's been ill. And when I would go over to this family member's house to be a part of their care, I always tell my great nephews, when we walk through the door, every single adult that you see, you greet them. Hello, grandma. How are you? Hello, auntie, so-and-so. How are you? Right? Every single adult that you see, you, uh, you greet. Am I clear? And they understand that, that you don't walk into someone's space and walk through the whole house ignoring all of the people that you pass. That's not acceptable. In my home, we come and go so often It'd be ridiculous for them to greet me and my husband every time they see it, right? I do expect for them to greet us when they come home from school, right? And to to have some formal uh, send-off in the morning when they go to school, right? I do expect that. But the running in and out, playing outdoors, they don't, every time they come through the door, they don't need to greet me. I don't expect that, right? So... That is what I'm saying. We're culturally humble. We change what we do depending on the culture or the setting that we're in. And that is pretty universal. Uh, when I lived in uh, Kenya and as well as India, in India, it was a little bit more um, exaggerated, I would say. But it, before you cross the threshold into someone's home, you needed to take your shoes off. And even if that meant that you were leaving them outdoors in bad weather, so be it. You took your shoes off no matter what. In Kenya, it was a little bit different. Same principle. You still took your shoes off, but they, just like here in the USA, they had a little entrance way, a foyer where you could leave your shoes there, right? So culturally, we do need to be sensitive and we need to be humble that not every situation we deal with is the exact same. We do change how we present ourselves, but that does not mean that we change who we are. And that's the gist of this, is that we have so many personalities in the fellowship. Everyone is free to be themselves. The things that we come together on and unify in is how we carry our message. 
in the message that we hear. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for you today. I hope that you will um, enjoy who you've been in recovery and continue to develop your own uh, personality and accepting the things that you feel are beautiful and the things that you need to change, turning those over to God so that he is free to remove those character defects that are causing you to fall short, you know, causing your shortcomings, right? Six and seven. I'm talking about step six and seven, right? So I hope that helps you and I hope that you'll have a beautiful day and I will be talking to you tomorrow.